I have a friend called Kathy. She lives in Bermondsey, where I live, but she was born and bred there. She loves and wants to serve her community. She's always respected the church and goes to services from time to time. I met her during COVID, when with some friends she opened the food bank for those in need in her community. I was able to help and encourage her in small but I hope important ways to help her to apply for grants, to tell her about other projects which have been developed, which may be a little bit further down the road that she could visit and learn from. And over those three years, she journeyed for having some food boxes at the back of the church hall in St Anne's Bermondsey, to renting a, a little bit of space in the community hall, but when COVID ended, then the community hall was needed for other things to then applying for grants in order that she could open two shop fronts, one as a food pantry and the other as a baby bank with, for clothing and for uh, children and young people's equipment. She invited me when the launch of the food pantry was about to take place, she invited me to come along and say some prayers of blessing for that event. Uh, I was deeply touched that she should want to do that, and it was a great privilege to do so. She instinctively understands the values of dignity and agency, the language that we often use today, without necessarily using those words herself. And I saw my task as a member of Christ Church to cheer her on, to help where I could to pray for God's blessing, to offer resources and expertise, to partner with her. Now for me, Kathy is a good Samaritan. I'm sure you know the story that Jesus taught when a teacher of the law comes to Jesus and says, and who is my neighbour? And the Samaritan, Jesus says, was the neighbour to the man who was caught amongst thieves because it was he who went above and beyond the sense or call of duty. He gave his time, his skills, his money. He bought healing, clothing and shelter. And he put himself at personal risk in order to do so. In 2013, Anne Morrissey published a book entitled Beyond the Good Samaritan. You might know it, you might have it. And in it, she critiques a model of social action if it only provides temporary relief to those in need without addressing some of the underlying causes of poverty and injustice. To put it another way, and to use an analogy perhaps familiar to you, downstream we may rescue people out of the river, but it's worth going upstream to find out why they're falling in. The downstream task is social action, the upstream task is social justice. And she argued 13 years ago that focusing only on downstream social action can perpetuate the cycle of dependency and fails to bring about lasting change in individuals and community. That change is what we want. That change is why we're here today. Now, many of us have become more familiar, haven't we, with recent decades with phrases like empowerment, agency, the importance of dignity of those words and what they convey. When we consider the mission of God through loving service and the emphasis upon empowering people to take control of their own lives rather than relying upon external interventions is at the root of so many different kinds of initiatives with names like community organising, social entrepreneurship, or asset-based approaches for mission. All of these 
utilise the existing skills and resources within communities. Now, my friend Kathy, who I mentioned at the beginning, she never uses phrases like asset-based approaches or social entrepreneurship. And you don't have to either. She loves and wants to serve her community. And people in your churches and communities love and want to serve their communities too. And we're here today because we want to think more deeply about how and in what way we can support, inspire, encourage, equip them in that task. But because Kathy has started to do that work, she's beginning to have a seat at the table with the local councillors when they're focusing upon grants and resources. And she can begin to go upstream to begin to speak to others about the causes which are impacting her community. Now, you wouldn't be here today, I think, if you didn't believe that faith and social action go together. I am preaching to the choir. I know that. You wouldn't be here today if you didn't want to love and serve your communities. My background is missions to seafarers, then parish ministry over more than 25 years, and in those places I wanted to offer hospitality and help across a wide section of different communities, whether supporting physically impaired, those on the autistic spectrum, young people, the older generation. So I'm with you on that journey, keeping faith and action together. Because in the words of John Stott, faith and social action are like two wings of a bird or two blades of a scissors, that sense in which uh, Two blades of a scissor cut better when they're working together. Faith and action together is for the best. Two wings of the bird. The bird flies better. That sense of keeping in unity both social action and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is an opportunity to think about how and why we might do that in Christ's name, to inspire Christ's communities. Now, it doesn't need to be perfect or complete. The tasks that we will move into will very often be imperfect. However, today, I'm sure that we can learn from each other. We can see how one step at a time God's kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven. During the season of ascension to Pentecost, Across the churches around the world and in our own diocese of Southwark, Viking to Encourage is a resource that we have been encouraging churches to pray about and engage in. And so it's appropriate as we think about growing good, we do so in this season of Thy Kingdom Come. We're exhorted, aren't we, to pray for our neighbours. The theme for Thy Kingdom Come this year is living the kingdom putting our, our faith into action in concrete ways. And one of my roles as Director of Mission and Evangelism in Solid Diocese is to help and resource such initiatives in this way. So it's providential, I think, that CAF and this growing good uh, learning endeavour is happening during this week. Tim Dearborn famously said, it's not the church of God that has a mission. It is the God of mission that has a church. It's not the church of God that has a mission. It's the God of mission that has a church. The missio Dei, the mission of God, who is the God of mission. Our mission is to follow Christ's footsteps, to speak with the kindness <coughs> and challenge with which he spoke, to act with the love and courage with which Christ acted. Our attempts may be, will be, imperfect and incomplete, but they are a sign of God's kingdom, imperfectly here on earth, as it will be perfected in heaven. And so I'm grateful for your commitment to this course and for your desire to follow Christ.
Thank you for being here.